Hey guys, Ron and Joanne, living retired on a mini solar farm. <laughs> oh, I tell ya, I had had a slight interruption. Had made adjustment on my battery bank. And as I've made little um, improvements, I've shown it. This is one I don't think I have ever shown. A while back, I had gotten a 100 amp MPPT solar controller, and this thing's awesome. Handles a lot. And I had questions. My, the output of the solar, um, my ground, and my hot. I, uh, a while back, and apparently I had done something right, and I had put, since this is a 100 amp uh, controller, I put a 100 amp inline fuse, that's in case if there's any shorts or what, controller won't get uh, uh, damaged, and wiring uh, won't get affected, and you know, won't hurt the batteries. So I've got quite a few fail safes there, there. Um, I've got over on the positive on this side I could show you if I got off my butt but uh, leading from my positive the inverter I've got a uh, uh, 250 amp inline fuse so you can never have too many safety factors but the reason that I'm here is that you know I was trying to be a little too easy on my batteries I don't know if it will show if you can see that's 14.1 14.2 uh, a few days ago that was only uh, probably staying up around uh, 13 at the most, 12.9. Uh, I was too conservative on the power coming from the panels coming into the controller. Controller was only allowing uh, a low absorption rate because I was too conservative in my things. So what I did on my high my high income my absorption voltage rate my disconnect is at 14.4 so that's that's improved the uh, situation tremendous I had questions about it so I consulted with AI and after doing research, I would say it, can't say he or she, um, AI confirmed that uh, the best absorption rate is staying within the parameters of 14.4, 14.8. Okay, I was still being a little bit on the conservative side, so from 12.9, uh, I went up to 14.4. And that's still, that won't boil my batteries. And uh, I'll just have to check my water level a little more frequently. They've been doing great. Usually about every two months I'll kind of look at it and it's been great. But since I went up a little bit, I will keep a closer eye. But so far, so good. Uh, the other night, my battery bank went down to about 12.4. 12.6 is uh, 100%. And I just thought that was a little bit odd. And I was working on this yesterday. And last night, about 12, about midnight, I looked at my little meter I've got in the office. And uh, it was sitting at 12.7. Uh, there was nothing being pulled out of the system. So I was happy with that. I woke up this morning, looked at it, and, uh, and what little bit of sun that was coming through 
that baby is already hitting uh, 14.0. So, if you're running uh, flooded lead acid batteries like mine, yeah, you got to be a little bit careful. And uh, the discharge rate's only 50% on these. Um, you have to really take in consideration, you know, the the voltage, the charge voltage, uh, uh, the most you can put in without, you know, causing any kind of uh, boiling in the batteries. But since I've increased the, uh, uh, raised the uh, voltage disconnect, high voltage disconnect from 12.9 to 14.4, it's been working super and having that means that I won't have no issues of running certain things I was uh, about a month ago I was trying to run my air condition off of this and it was doing it and then it popped off and I guarantee you that was because the, the and it was a sunny day I wasn't allowing enough voltage in and it just everything was just out of balance it just so I feel pretty good about this but it's still doing good batteries have been super um, this charger I hardly ever even use it anymore actually uh, I've got it disconnected um, What was leading up to all this is the other night when uh, when the discharge was uh, a little bit low. I thought, well, you know, let me uh, go and maybe put this thing back in line. And I've got a little timer here, and and uh, a couple times in the night, I, I before I would have it set so um, it would, you know, turn on, you know, for about 30 minutes. Um, but if I did that, the display, it wouldn't pull a whole lot, but still there would be a slight drain because this thing would be on and I didn't like that. So I was going to use another small, uh, charger, but I started focusing the, my, my eyes back on the solar charger. Uh, the controller and uh, after I remembered you know how to get into the menu and, and everything and doing research and AI advised me to for the kind of batteries that I'm working to raise the uh, uh, high voltage absorption and doing so it worked pretty darn good so sometimes there's some things that uh, AI is useful So I just want to share that with you in case anybody out there is uh, doing this and, and, and you're thinking you could get more out of your system and uh, if you're running uh, the same kind of batteries I am uh, lithiums all them are, are nice and fancy and they're expensive but a part of me I don't I don't trust lithium lithium is more susceptible of uh, fire catching on fire and, and my bank stays outside so when it's really really cold uh, it's it does fine and with the uh, the heat that it does uh, put out a little bit uh, the uh, power inverter when it's the heat that it kind of uh, that builds up and the fans turn on for, so it can exit I mean it keeps an, a little bit of warmth in here but uh, flooded lead acid batteries. I mean you can charge them babies almost any temperature as long as they ain't frozen um, So I've never had trouble so I'm pretty content but uh, that situation with that controller and raising up the uh, uh, high voltage level has really cured a lot of problems so we're going to sit back and observe and take notes. Y'all have a blessed day and uh, 
we'll see you later.